Home Secretary Suella Bravman has appeared on the BBC's Sunday with Laura Koonsberg, where she evaded difficult questions about the Home Office's scheme to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda, and where she also may have told a big fat lie. Surprise, surprise, what a shocker. Is it safe to send refugees to Rwanda from Britain? You sound like you are completely convinced of that. I am convinced that it is safe to send refugees to Rwanda. Now, the reason I ask that is that in 2018, a group of refugees in Rwanda did stage a protest because their food rations were reduced. Do you know what happened to them? I'm not familiar with that particular case. I'm not familiar with that particular case. What a surprise. You do have a relevant job. You have a job where it would be useful um, to be familiar with that case. Let's look at the case Koonsberg was referring to. In January 2018, food rations at the Kaziba refugee camp in Rwanda were cut. The camp is home to over 17,000 Congolese refugees who have fled from the Democratic Republic of Congo into Rwanda. Millions of Congolese civilians have left their homes after militias linked to the Rwandan government terrorized them. There have been massacres and entire villages have been burned to the ground. After the food rations were reduced, around 4,000 unarmed refugees left the camp to protest at a UNHCR office. A day after they arrived, on February the 22nd, 2018, the police surrounded the protesters, telling them to separate women and children from the men. Moments later, the police opened fire on the refugees. 13 were killed and many more were injured. Two pregnant women miscarried. In the following week, some 60 refugees were arrested, with others reporting harassment from the police to stop them cooperating with international investigators. All right, so that's the pretty horrific, brutal case that Bradman claims not to be familiar with. As I say, this should really be her area of expertise, and could it really be the case that she didn't know? Well, last year, after her predecessor Priti Patel introduced the Rwanda scheme to the House of Commons, the killing of the refugees was raised at least three times. She knows that serious concerns have been raised about Rwandan restrictions on political freedom, on the treatment of people who are LGBT, on the fact that 12 refugees were shot by the authorities in 2018 for protesting against food cuts. How can he say Rwanda is a safe country when 12 refugees protesting about cuts in food rations were shot dead by security forces? The minister has spent the last days talking up the human rights records of the Rwandan government. And yet the previous minister expressed, and I quote, concerns around civil and political rights in Rwanda. In 2018, 12 refugees were shot dead during protests about cuts to food allowances. The massacre was also reported in the right-wing press when the scheme was announced. This is from The Telegraph in June last year. The Rwandan police have used heavy force in the past to keep refugee protests under control. In 2018, police dispersed a group of 3,000 refugees protesting over UN food cuts with live gunfire killing at least eight people. And the Home Office's own official advice on Rwanda discusses the killings. This is from the Home Office's Country Policy and Information Note for Rwanda. Sources report that refugees have sometimes protested at conditions in the camps. The Rwandan government has taken steps to contain the demonstrations and prevent disruption and violence, but reportedly using excessive force in some instances. The last protest at which they allegedly did so took place in February 2018, when a number of refugees were arrested and killed. And the Home Office's note on human rights in Rwanda says this. In February 2018, 12 Congolese refugees from Kaziba camp were killed when police opened fire on protesters demonstrating against a cut in food rations. Finally, on the 19th of December last year, the High Court, which ruled that the Rwanda scheme is legal, discussed the 2018 refugee killings extensively. This is just one example. The claimants rely on what happened in 2018 when refugees from neighbouring countries at Kaziba refugee camp protested at the conditions in the camp. It has been reported, for example, by Human Rights Watch. The police who entered the camp in response to the protest used excessive force. They fired on the refugees and some were killed. You can't necessarily expect a Home Secretary to know what's on every document that's on the Home Office website, but this is a policy which she has made. She is constantly, constantly talking about this plan to ship refugees to Rwanda, yet this key part of information, which has come up again and again in Parliament, come up again and again in the press, come up again and again in court cases, she oh, doesn't know about, doesn't know about. Now, that's either a lie or it's incompetence, right? Maybe to distract from the Home Office um, scheme and how it completely fails to protect the refugees that Bradman wants to exile to Rwanda. Here's Koonsberg again. If something terrible 
like that happened, where 12 refugees were shot at and lost their lives. If something awful happened when refugees were sent from the UK to Rwanda, would you end the policy? What I will also say is our legislation makes provision for those extreme circumstances whereby if there is something unforeseeable, uh, serious and irreversible harm, we, someone would be able to challenge the decision. We consider that to be a very outside chance, a very extreme situation, but there's always allowance in the legislation to, to, uh, to allow for that. So there's an allowance to challenge the scheme after there's been serious and irreversible harm, like the state murdering refugees. What a relief. If it happens, then you can appeal. Another thing Bradman was clearly unfamiliar with was the actual terms of the deal she'd signed, or at least she wasn't very keen to talk about those terms in detail. That became apparent when Koonsberg asked her this. In the deal as well, which we've had a good look at it, there is also a suggestion that the UK will resettle some of Rwanda's most vulnerable refugees. How many people do you expect will come to the UK from Rwanda under this scheme? No, we don't foresee that happening. Well, our, hang on, it's, our in, it's, in the, it's in the agreement. It says the participants will make arrangements for the United Kingdom to resettle a portion of Rwanda's most vulnerable refugees in the United Kingdom. Our arrangement is very much focused on uh, people who are coming to the UK from safe countries and unlawfully, and then be re being resettled to Rwanda. But it's in the, it's in scheme, the agreement then. So why did you is, sign it if it's, if it's in the agreement? That's what it says is, in black and white. Our scheme is uncapped. It means that uh, we can potentially send over several thousands of people from the UK to Rwanda. When I went to Rwanda, I saw with my own eyes how Rwanda is getting ready to receive these and, people. And you have said that, but is there a limit on the number of people that Rwanda could send back to this country? Because you've signed an agreement that says in black and white, the United Kingdom will resettle a portion of Rwanda's most vulnerable refugees. The, 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 the balance and the reality of this agreement is that Rwanda is taking uh, people from the United Kingdom. We are resettling people who have arrived here illegally and therefore will be removed or relocated to Rwanda. As I've said, I've just seen the accommodation that's in train. They're building the housing that will be used to uh, accommodate people who are coming from Rwanda. We've, I've visited a school that will be used and, to support and, and the you, education And you said needs. that, but it is clearly here in black and white that the agreement you have signed also says that the United Kingdom might have to take refugees from Rwanda. But I, I think our viewers will hear that you don't want to address that point. Well, so. no, the, the, the arrangement is very clear. On a balance and overwhelmingly, Rwanda will be taking people from the United Kingdom, not the other way around. Okay. Why would you sign a deal with any Tory minister at the moment, right? She, she's saying in the deal it says this, that the UK is going to have to take some refugees from Rwanda in exchange for the refugees we're sending. I mean, I don't like talking about this, like trade. Um, but, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the reality of the agreement anyway. And then Suella Bradman's like, well, that might be what the agreement says, but I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen. If I was the Rwandan government watching that, I'd be like, this is not someone who is negotiating in good faith. It, what a car crash. Mm. What a car crash of an interview. I, if I were... A, someone from the Rwandan government and saw that, I would be shocked. And I think it really speaks to the lack of um, commitment or respect for, for any evidence for, and often for truth. You know, at what point did Braverman answer any of the questions that she was actually asked? She just repeated the same lines. And ultimately, it's to signal to the base that we're being strict and firm on migration. And the detail doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't seem to matter at all. But it also shows the lack of respect um, to R Rwanda and officials who I'm sure will be watching this and will be, I'm sure there'll be some chaos behind the scenes going on right now. And I feel for the civil servants at the Home Office that are probably frantically having to be in communication their Rwandan counterparts and the emails that are being sent right now. But I think it just shows the lack of seriousness that is coming from the Conservative government at the moment and a lack of seriousness particularly around the Rwanda policy, which is not evidence-based and is really just there to signal that um, the Conservatives are going to be tough on migration. But what I'm not understanding is... Um, how the Labour Party will respond if this policy is seen to be quote unquote um, successful, not in the terms that I would um, call it a success, but if they're able to frame it in a way um, that they say that we have, say, less small boats coming. We know that 
everything around the illegal migration bill is going to result in people moving in other ways. So whether that's um, moving on lorries or an increase in um, people smuggling and modern slavery, people will continue to move regardless. But if this is being able to be framed as a success in some way, regardless of the detail, regardless of the truth, then I think there are some concerns about how um, the Labour opposition will be able to respond to that. 